Yeah, but this is the third time I've tried to work on this conveyor. Sorry, but we're going to need it in about 10 minutes. But once I start, it'll only take me five minutes. You can't guarantee that, can you? Well, no, but I mean... No, what what, what if you run into some other problems? Then what? Look, I got a lot of mail, and this conveyor's going to be running steady for the rest of the tour. Well, I hope it keeps on running, because it just may stop on you. Hey, Dan. Uh, Mr. Daniels, I need your help. Now, what's the matter, Davis? Well, you know the conveyor you've been on my neck about? The one that's long overdue for cleaning and lubrication? Yeah, what about it? Well, the mail processing supervisor won't let me work on it. Says he's got to get it started up in about 10 minutes and run it for the rest of the tour. For crying out loud, did you tell him it was only going to take a few minutes? Yep, sure did. Well, that work is long overdue. I tell you what, Ben, you go out and start the job. You should be able to finish before they start up. I mean, I don't even have to lock it out. Well, that's up to you. Now, just in case, I'll call the tour superintendent and ask him to talk to the supervisor. Whatever you say. Maintenance, Daniel speaking. Who? Oh, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Cox. Yeah, I've got a copy of that purchase request right here. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Cox, I know this is a large order, but we need every one of these items. Daniels! Yes, sir. Daniels, you better come quick. Ben Davis got his arm caught on the conveyor. Oh, no. I didn't know he was working on it. I forgot to call the tour superintendent. I told him I was going to use it. If he had to work on it, why didn't he lock it out? Hey, how you doing today? Hi, John. How are you? Looks like it's going to be a pretty nice day today, huh? Nice day. Oh, almost forgot. I need a can of dog spray. Hey, I'll see you guys later, all right? Hey, Betty. Oh, uh, yes, Evan. How about a can of dog spray? I must have lost mine yesterday. Oh. Oh, dear, I'm all out. Look, I'm really busy. I'm working on this report for the manager. Say, why didn't you tell me when you got in yesterday? I must have forgot. You forgot. Look, I'm really busy. I tell you what, I'll get you a can for the supply cabinet when you get back, okay? Yeah, but what if... Uh, I... I'll see you later, Evans. Yeah, but Betty, I mean, what, what if I'll I need... I'll see you later. Okay. Okay. All right, look, I'll get a truck over to you as fast as I can. Right, bye. Uh, Carter, I need you. What's the matter? Look, we got a disabled truck over at Kennedy Falls. Uh, take the standby, number 926, mm -hmm. all right? Run it over there, transfer the mails. I'll, uh, I'll call the VMF and, and uh, get a tow truck to bring back the disabled vehicle. You can hitch a ride back with the tow truck. Okay, I'm on my way. Right. Uh, <clears throat> I just remembered, Sam, uh, the left front tire on 926 is really bald. 926 is all we've got. Look, Grace, that tire didn't get bald overnight. As a matter of fact, you drove that truck yesterday. Why didn't you tag it then? I guess I forgot. Well, that's just great. Well, we've got to do something now. Look, take 926, but when you get back this afternoon, I want you to take that truck over to BMF and tag it. Whatever you say. Here comes another one. Yep. You know we got two more to be unloaded. It's gonna be a tight squeeze, Mr. Turner. Yeah. Tommy, get down and give him a hand. What do you mean? Come on, Tommy, just get down and help guide the truck in. I knew he could do it. Hmm. Okay, okay. Looks pretty good. 
You know something, Gonzalez? We're going to make a maintenance mechanic out of you yet. That's all for now, Juan. Why don't you go report to Christy, help him with that conveyor he's working on. Can you show me one more time how to get that a little smoother? Sure, it's simple. But what about your goggles? Hey, don't worry, kid. This will only take a second. Betty, your report seems to cover everything. You've done a, a good job. However, this item here, gasoline consumption, is a little confusing. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if you listed last year's figures, we could get a better feel on how well we're doing. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, this is the postmaster. What? Yes, I'll take care of it right away. Mrs. Johnson, my carrier supervisor, is with me now. I'll send her right over there right away. Goodbye. What's the matter? It was the hospital. Evans was severely bitten by a couple of dogs. They're working on him now. You'd better go over and see what you can do to help him. Well, I don't know where she can be. Look, she left here with a replacement truck over an hour ago. Well, she was supposed to help transfer the mail from the disabled truck. Well, I don't know. Uh, look, hold on a second. We got another call. All right. Yeah, Baker speaking. What? Where? Near Kennedy Falls. Oh, no. Yeah, Carter. Yeah, that's one of my drivers. All right, I'll get right on it. Wait, wait, hold on. How did, how, how did it happen? A blowout. No. Look, how badly is she hurt? Well, she, is she going to be all right? Yes, this is another safety film. But have you noticed anything different so far about our characters and their accidents? Every accident was influenced by the supervisor. N no, all accidents aren't caused by supervisors. Many occur simply because employees do not follow correct safety procedures. But why don't they? Isn't it the supervisor's responsibility to ensure that their employees are trained and know correct safety procedures? Isn't it the supervisor's responsibility to supervise and to inspect their operations, to ensure that the procedures are being followed? And when safety procedures are violated, isn't it the supervisor's responsibility to reprimand the employee and, if necessary, to take disciplinary action? These responsibilities are all part of your job, and they're important. But they shouldn't be done simply because they're part of your job. More importantly, they're the right thing, the human thing to do. You should do them out of a concern for your subordinates, out of caring for their welfare, as well as not wanting to be or feel responsible for anyone's accident. As a postal supervisor, you're supposed to set good examples, especially towards safety. Whatever you do, whatever you say, greatly influences your employees and supervisors who make exceptions to safety rules, regardless of the reasons, are asking for trouble, directly or indirectly. This is precisely what happened in the scenes you've just viewed. Yeah, Maintenance supervisor the... Dan Daniels mistakenly gave the impression to one of his mechanics that lockout was an arbitrary rule. I wouldn't even have to lock it out. Well, that's up to you. Uh, just in case, I'll he intended call to call the tour superintendent so we could alert the foreman. Whatever but that was irrelevant. Because Dan Daniels didn't insist on lockout, and because Ben Davis didn't think it was important, his right hand will never be the same. Oh, dear, I'm all out. Look, I don't have time right now. I'm working on this report for the manager. Supervisor hey, Betty Johnson was here? busy preparing a report for her boss. She wasn't God. thinking. Look, I'm really busy right now. I tell you what, I'll get your can from the supply cabinet when you get back, okay? In this case, letter carrier John Evans suffered the consequences. All right. Uh, I just remembered, Sam, uh, the left front tire on 926 is really bald. 
Supervisor Sam Baker was more concerned about a disabled vehicle full of mail than he was about a bald, unsafe tire. And Grace Carter paid the penalty. Here comes another one. You know, we got two more to unload. It's gonna be a tight squeeze, Mr. Turner. Yeah. Tommy, why don't you get down and give him a hand? What do you mean? Come on, Tommy, just get down and help guide the truck in. Platform supervisor Ed Turner was careless in giving instructions to Tommy Smith, a young mail handler. Ed's choice of words was very poor, especially when given to an inexperienced employee who did exactly as he was told. Can you show me how to get the cause of the accident oh, to sure. Walt Miller, the maintenance supervisor, was Come on, obvious. Don't worry, kid. This will only take a second. Miller's reasoning wasn't very sound. Remember, accidents take but a split second. Our supervisors didn't handle these situations very well, did they? But why didn't they? There's nothing magical about being a good safety conscious supervisor. It starts by knowing and then practicing these. The seven keys to good safety supervision. The first, set a good example. The old saying, action speaks louder than words, is an excellent guide. This means, of course, that you, the supervisor, should observe all safety and fire protection rules, not just when it's convenient to you, but at all times. Supervisors who make exceptions to the rules, regardless of the reason, seriously undermine the overall safety effort. Setting a good example also means that supervisors, where required, should also wear personal protective equipment. In so doing, you're showing your employees that it's the smart thing to do. Be enthusiastic about safety and fire protection, especially when you give safety talks to your employees. Remember, enthusiasm will generate enthusiasm. And don't limit discussion on safety just to those periodic safety talks. Make safety a part of each day's activities. Try to discuss some aspect of safety each and every day. Always show your interest. And don't let production or schedules compromise safety or essential fire protection. The second key to good safety supervision is know your operation. You must become an expert, for only by understanding thoroughly your entire operation and really how it meshes with other related operations can you appreciate and fully evaluate potential safety and fire hazards that may exist. The third key is be alert for unsafe conditions. Every walk through your area should be an impromptu inspection tour, allowing you to correct hazards that might otherwise cause injury. And fourth, inspect often and inspect intelligently. Safe working conditions can be achieved only through detection and elimination of unsafe conditions and unsafe practices. Formal inspections help do this, so cooperate fully with the safety officer at your facility. But even formal inspections are no substitute for a first-hand look by the supervisor. If possible, include one or two of your employees on your inspection team. It's a good way to show them they have an important part in the safety effort in your area. It also gives you the opportunity to illustrate some of the standards of performance you're seeking. And to be of value, your observation of violations must be translated into effective corrective action. This is our fifth key. Take effective corrective action. Make it clear to your employees that correction of an unsafe practice is not a reprimand in itself, but a step toward improved safety performance. And remember, to be effective, correction must be prompt. 
This way, details of the incident will be fresh in everyone's mind. You'll also avoid the impression that you're indecisive or procrastinating. Maintain discipline is our sixth key. Disciplinary action may be in order when reasonable levels of performance are not met and there are no extenuating circumstances. But disciplinary action should be as consistent and equitable as possible so that employee resentment is held to a minimum. Remember, the overall object should be improvement of performance. The seventh and final key to good safety supervision is Know your employees. Keep in mind that an employee's ability to perform a specific job depends upon training, education, experience, and general capabilities. You must know these characteristics when you plan job assignments, training programs, and performance reviews. Only by so doing can you achieve the safest, most efficient performance. Let's recap. Here are the seven keys again. One, set a good example. Remember the old saying, action speaks louder than words. Two, know your operation, and of course, how it relates to others. Three, be alert for unsafe conditions at all times. Four, inspect often and inspect intelligently. The safety officer at your facility will help here. Five, take effective corrective action and do it promptly. Six, maintain discipline consistently and equitably. And seven, know your employees. How differently would our film have started if our supervisors had followed these keys? Betty? Uh, yes, Evan. How about a can of dog spray? I must have lost mine yesterday. Oh. No matter how important Betty oh, Johnson's dear, report out. was, her first obligation time. was to be sure her carriers were properly equipped. And she could have dealt with John Evans' forgetfulness at another time. Now, the truck hasn't left yet. Well, it's Sam Baker had another option, too. The, uh, look, I'm sorry. It's going to be another 15 or 20 minutes before we can get another truck over to you. Well, our standby has a bad front tire. Oh, sure. Timely delivery of the mail is our primary job, but never at the cost of employee safety. Ed Turner would have assigned an experienced employee or would have made sure that Tommy Smith knew where to stand and how to give backing signals before giving him the assignment. Walt Miller would have taken the time to use his goggles. And Dan Daniels? You go out there and yes, he would have responded to the situation to differently, too. I wouldn't even have to lock it out. No way, Ben. You lock out that conveyor before you start. No shortcuts, understand? Yes, sir, Mr. Daniels. Remember, accidents can be prevented, and safety is your responsibility. <laughs>